Hi, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Supernatural by Design. My name is Jarrett, and this is part two of the American Super Shemitah, a two-part series dedicated to the science behind the prophetic patterns of Super Shemitah's celestial signs and the number 11, and what it means for America in 2022. And so with that said, let's pick up where we first left off, which was highlighting the fact that we had two 11 date duration connections in addition to an 11 relationship to a duration, all found at the rise of America, occurring on a Super Shemitah, the front cover of the American story. Then saints, from there, we discovered that from that Super Shemitah to the Super Shemitah that we're in now is also related to the number 11, being that of 245 years. And because 245 is related to 11, represent saints the chronological boundary markers of the American story, meaning the start and end of America as we know it, and is a concept illustrated in Acts 17.26, when it states, and he, meaning God, made from one man every nation of humanity to live on all the face of the earth, determining their fixed times and the fixed boundaries of their habitation. And so the key concept here is that we're talking about fixed times, a start and an end date the rise and fall of a nation. So now let's fill in this story through unique and significant events that are not only tied to the number 11 phenomenon, but also Shemitah cycles and celestial signs that occur over and over and over again, highlighting God's pinpoint accuracy of using celestial events to mark not only world events, but what type of events these would be. Wars, plagues, famines, significant rulers, all sorts. In fact, one ruler that we are familiar with is Christ because he is marked by a celestial event. Nonetheless, we're gonna lay this timeline out using the Shemitah cycle pattern first, and then we'll overlay it with the celestial connections that are tied to them. So first, our Shemitah connection. As God has been revealing very unique connections to this Shemitah pattern, one thing that he has identified for me using this metaphor I'm showing you on the screen by illustrating the story of America using a book, the Shemitah cycles in between the covers represent the chapters of the story. Similarly, like every great story, you will have six elements to the plot, meaning that you will have an exposition, an inciting incident, a rising action, a climax, a falling action, and a resolution. And this is where it gets exciting, saints, because each one of these plot elements matches a Shemitah cycle, in addition to the celestial sign aspect that is the same astronomical event at each one of these points, coinciding with the Shemitah year, which we'll see in a moment. But as for the plot elements, the first event, and as a part of the front cover, the first Super Shemitah and leads into our exposition is the American Revolutionary War. Our next event, the inciting incident, is the Civil War of 1861, which is also of the Shemitah year 5621, and leads us into the rising action, which is World War I and World War II, and will culminate at the top of the American story with the climax, symbolized by the World Trade Center attack and occurred on the Shemitah year, bringing the story downward in the falling action of the Afghanistan war and the Iraq war. And then finally, bringing us to the next point of the Afghanistan withdrawal, which will take us from the resolution into the back cover, the fall of America, which we will spend a significant amount of time in the next section on, the last hour. However, if we examine the timeline with the newly added information of wars being tied to this timeline in Shemitah years, what does that tell us about the overall theme of America? You guessed it, war. So now let's take this idea and examine it just a little further by talking about some of the things that God has led me to understand about this unique connection uh, with America and war. But always remember, take everything before the Lord first. Don't just take my word for it. If I am correct, then he will confirm it within your spirit. And to that point, I'll be providing some Bible verses 
that I believe help support this position, as that is key for whenever studying any topic. So with that said, let's talk about war from a biblical perspective, and then we'll tie it back into this theme for the American story. So from a biblical perspective, war is one of God's tools for judging a nation. In fact, you see this pattern repeated over and over again. For example, in Israel's history, in Leviticus 26, and I will set my face against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. Or in Deuteronomy 28, the Lord shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. In fact, that's what the Amos Code series is about, demonstrating how God uses celestial signs to droughts and fires and over raining weather-wise as calls for repentance before the ultimate judgment found in Amos 3.11, judgment by a foreign nation. And so moreover, you get a sense from the stories in the Bible that God uses war as his default final judgment because of its overly common occurrence. Therefore, it wouldn't be unusual for God to judge America using war, just as he did Israel. In fact, we are even told that Israel is a model for us to pay special attention to. And another reason why the Amos Code series is significant, because it demonstrates that exact pattern before judgment. Another unique aspect biblically with regards to the topic of war is that even one of God's titles is a military title, right? The Lord of Armies. In fact, the culminating event of the book of Revelation is the war that occurs at the Battle of Armageddon. In fact, it's even through war that God rescues Israel in the Battle of Ezekiel 38 that God uses this moment as an evangelistic tool to let the nations know that God is the God of Israel and moreover that he uses war to do this. In fact, it's one of the time fours in Ecclesiastes chapter three. And therefore saints, war is very significant. America was founded on it and America will rise to military dominance because of it, which is why the fall of America will also come by war. Hence why we are seeing in the news right now at this moment tension between America and Russia and America and China and America and Iran. There is global escalation and it doesn't appear to be slowing down. As war being the tool of judgment, this is why the final Super Shemitah of 5782 is very significant. Let me emphasize that again. This Super Shemitah of 5782 saints is very significant. And so, because we know that war is very much a tool of judgment that God uses, let's expand upon briefly the wars that we have just outlined in order to understand how they fit into the narrative. And so beginning at the front cover and the exposition, the American Revolutionary War was the mechanism for the rise of America. So America was birthed in war. Secondly, what makes the Civil War our inciting incident very significant saints is the fact that this particular war became the foundation for modern warfare as we know it today because in this war there was the advent of the repeating rifle submarines telegraphs trains iron cladded ships and i love the submarines aspect because isn't that in the news a lot lately with america and the AUKUS deal for the submarines and of course china has all these submarines but moreover that the first submarine used in warfare was, was the Civil War. So this is what makes this particular war very unique, more so than let's say Vietnam or the War of 1812. This war marked a very significant change when it comes to warfare globally. And so just want to underscore the significance of this event. Well, anyways, that takes us to the rising action because it would be from this war that America through World War I and World War II would continue that military perfection, let's say. In fact, so much so that America military might was displayed on a Shemitah year. When the two atomic bombs that dropped ending World War II and the first time nuclear weapons had been used in warfare were in 1945, that's a Shemitah year. And so just giving further credence that the rising action represents 
America gaining military dominance throughout the world. Until we get to 9-11 of 2001 and climax of the story, the World Trade Center attack, which is significant because this would set off a series of events to lead us into the Afghanistan withdrawal. So let's cover those two real quick. Because one thing that I found super interesting, Saints, is the use of the number 11 within these two events in very significant ways. And the purpose of the Saints is to demonstrate that because the number 11 is found in so many of the small details of each event, that in order for these patterns to emerge, there was a supernatural influence behind the scenes because it would be statistically impossible for people to carry out such events and underscored by a numerical pattern seen through the number 11. Now I have them listed up on the screen. I don't wanna go through all of them. However, there are two that I definitely wanna to touch upon. With the first being that 9-11 is the same date as the anniversary for the construction of the Pentagon, which is the headquarters for the United States Department of Defense, which is a war connection in that this is the building that wars are planned. And so this particular detail is very significant because again, it ties back in the overall theme of war when the third plane crashed into the Pentagon marking its anniversary by flight 77 which is seven times 11, interestingly enough. Now, the second detail I wanna highlight is that 9-11, if we flip the date numerically and make it 11-9, this happens to be the date of Tish above, numerically speaking, just simply meaning that 9-11 is not actually Tish above. It's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying numerically they're flipped, which is a characteristic of the number 11, by the way. There's a symmetrical aspect to it which you can see using that idiom of a mirror. But nonetheless, my point about Tisha B'Av is this is really interesting, saints. The people of Israel celebrate this every year because it marks a number of disasters in Jewish history, primarily with the destruction of the first and second temple happened exactly on 11-9, which is the ninth of Av. And it may be important to note that there are two calendars that the Jews operate off of, there's a civil calendar and a religious calendar. Well, anyways, 11-9 would be if you're taking it from the aspect of the civil calendar, which also is a symmetrical calendar, by the way, that 11 characteristic, which is interesting to see this numerical connection within Tisha B'Av and 9-11 as we do in the very digits of mathematics. Like you see on this chart where the base numbers at the very top create a pattern all the way down that are symmetrical to their highlighted counterpart, as you can see on the screen below. And so moreover, it's just interesting to see this 9-11 and 11-9 connection because of its symmetrical relationship. And it's not to mention that they also make really pretty cool graphs. Sorry, I know that was a lot of math. Hopefully you followed that. If not, definitely please ask some questions down below. Although I definitely plan on putting out a more mathematical oriented biblical numerology video so definitely consider subscribing if you're interested in those types of topics however one more unique connection to this palindrome or symmetrical connection from 9 11 and 11 9 that i want to highlight has to do with the infamous plane that everyone saw as the afghanistan withdrawal was underway remember this plane well what's interesting the number on it was 11 9 and again, highlighting that symmetrical connection to 9-11 and emphasizing the fact that 9-11 of 2001 is a very mathematical oriented event highlighting God's sovereignty because he's using these details in mathematics, science, astronomical science in order that we would seek him as a nation and is why we see an 11 connection in both 9-11 and the Afghanistan withdrawal. In fact, even the date duration between these two dates has to do with the number of 22, which is two times 11. And 22 is also the number of chapters in the book of Revelation, it's an end times number. So moreover, these two dates are very significant, marking the climax and the resolution of the American story and pointing to the downfall of America. 
However, it's in the middle with the falling action it has to do with the Afghanistan war because it's the longest war in American history and it was during this time that America began losing its military dominance. And what do I mean by that? Well, well, saints. Um, so explain, this. How, how do we get to this stage, Michael? Um, really two main developments, um, one abroad um, and then one at home. The one abroad is that our main competitors, and we're really talking about China and Russia here, um, have for some time been investing in fighting a conventional war while we've been mired in 17 years of counterterrorism. The other is a development here at home, which is the Budget Control Act of 2011 sequestration, which significantly cut defense spending um, and put those two things together, and they've brought us to this place. Are you optimistic this all gets fixed? So I'm not, I'm not. Um, there were similar warnings in 2010, similar warnings in 2014, Jeff, by similar panels. Nothing was done. This reminds me a bit, Jeff, of all of the strategic intelligence warnings um, in the years before 9-11, and we all know how that story ended. And so moreover, the Afghanistan war, the time period in between the World Trade Center attack and the Afghanistan withdrawal, while America was looking away, its enemies began to make plans, which is now surfacing because of the Afghanistan withdrawal and marked America's military dominance has now been taken over and places us in our resolution, AKA the final hour. And so these events of war, as we look at our American story timeline, occur on Shemitah years, with two of them having a profound connection to the number 11. Now, aside from these having connections to the Shemitah year, Let's now bring in the aspect of the celestial event, an astronomical event that repeats every time one of these events take place as a celestial confirmation in sync with a calendar pattern. And in context to America, this is symbolized, which will prove biblically here in a moment, the sun in the constellation of Gemini. So now let's dive a little further into the celestial connections and the American Super Shemitah. Now, before we begin this portion, I want to pull up this quote by Johannes Kepler, considered to be a key figure in the 17th century scientific revolution, who's best known for his laws of planetary motion. And he would later on state, I had the intention of becoming a theologian but now I see how God is by my endeavors, also glorified in astronomy, for the heavens declare the glory of God. Many people may not know this, but modern Western science was founded by Christians. In fact, C.S. Lewis famously stated, men became scientific because they expected law in nature, and they expected law in nature because they believed in a law giver. And Johannes Kepler was one of those. And he realized, saints, that the study of astronomical events glorifies God. And so as we study this topic, that is what I want us to keep in the back of our mind, that God is glorified as we study his creation because it points us back to a creator because celestial events highlight the statistical improbabilities for these events to be random. And so it's important to have that perspective as we take a look at these celestial signs. And so beginning on 7-4 of 1776, the sun rose in this constellation and marked a covenant that the nation of America made with God through the Declaration of Independence. So this was a very significant date and why all the subsequent dates marking our events on the Shemitah cycle will now have solar eclipses in the constellation of Gemini. And so moreover, whenever you think of America, think Gemini, because it's related back to the very founding of this nation on 7-4 with the sun rising in that constellation. In fact, just to solidify the point, one year and one day later was a total solar eclipse on 7-5 of 1777, the very year of the Super Shemitah. And God using this event 
to signify that point, the rise of America. Now our other dates, we had an annual eclipse on 7-8 of 1861, the year of the Civil War. We then had one on 621 of 2001, marking the World Trade Center attack. And then we also had another on 621 of 2020 and correlating with the Afghanistan withdrawal because both of the 621 eclipses land on the summer solstice, a very unique characteristic because just as both land on the summer solstice, the World Trade Center attack is also tied to the Afghanistan withdrawal. And so in both ways, they're very similar. But nonetheless, the point of this exercise was just simply to demonstrate that the constellation of Gemini is tied to America. Now, although we've demonstrated that on this timeline, what does that even mean? Well, this is where God began to surface some very unique connections in the Bible to the constellation of Gemini. So let's check those out in order to see how this fits into the Super Shemitah pattern. Because again, we always want to bring a biblical perspective. That's the whole point of the celestial signs. They point you back to God. So let's dig into his word to find the answer. And to do that, let's break this Gemini discussion into two subsets. Because similarly to the number 11 having dual meanings of a promise of a blessing and a promise of a judgment, the constellation of Gemini also has dual meaning, which is war and the bride of Christ. So let's highlight the war aspect because that will take the most time. So let's turn to Genesis chapter 49 verses five and six. Now to give you a little backdrop as to what is happening, uh, Jacob is getting ready to die and he gives a prophetic announcement over all 12 of his sons, which of course later become the 12 tribes of Israel. And so he goes through son by son, each individually, that's the key part, because it's only in verses five and six in this instance, he actually ties two of the sons together. And why is this important? Well, the constellation of Gemini across many cultures connect the constellation of Gemini to twin brothers. Now it varies in some cultures. However, in most instances, we will find that there's a connection to either being brothers or twins. And in some instances, just siblings, like a brother and a sister, but more generally speaking, that they are siblings. And so Jacob is making this connection by tying Simon and Levi together, which it's also important to note that many rabbis use Genesis 49 to depict the 12 tribes of Israel representing one of the 12 constellations. Like Judah is associated with being a lion, hence why Jesus in Revelation chapter five states that he is a lion from the tribe of Judah. And so that verse is originating from Genesis 49. And of course there's others. However, my whole point is saints is that if we look at Simon and Levi, it states our brothers and their weapons of violence are their swords for in their anger, they killed men. And of course swords is one of the main weapons used in warfare in the ancient biblical times. And we notice that it's not just one instance that Simon and Levi are using their swords. It states that they are killing men. So it's a continual thing, brothers of war. Now, why is this significant? Well, this is going to bring us into some Greek mythology, surprisingly enough. And before you get all crazy, this connection is in the Bible because I always like to contend that there is truth rooted in myths in various ancient mythologies. For example, if you remember when Paul is talking about the angels in 2 Peter chapter 2, he explains that the angels from Noah's times are locked up in Tartarus. Tartarus is a Greek concept and is the only time this Greek word is used right here. However, he uses it to explain that the angels that fell in Noah's times are locked up in a place that's different than hell. This is worse than that. So he uses this Greek concept in order to convey that point. And therefore there's a truth in the myth and how Tartarus got its origins within Greek culture, because this is where they believed lies the deep abyss 
a dungeon of torment and suffering for the wicked, as a prison for the titans. Hence why we see similar stories throughout every ancient culture matching the account of Genesis chapter 6. So I just wanted to use that as a kind of foundation example, but coming back to Gemini, from a Greek perspective, was associated with Castor and Pollux. And from a Greek perspective, Castor and Pollux were known for warfare because they were very skilled fighters and who were famously depicted in the story of Jason and the Argonauts, which is important because it associated Castor and Pollux with sailors. Wow, that was a long way around solely to make this point that in Acts chapter 28, verse 11, Paul is on his way to Rome and he hops on an Alexandrian ship to take him there. And it states that the boat had figureheads of Castor and Pollux, but moreover that it connects the constellation of Gemini again, indirectly to war, similar to Genesis 49. However, touching on one more point with the connection with Castor and Pollux and sailors and being related to America all around the 4th of July, Remember, that's exactly what this Netflix cover poster for Stranger Things 3 was representing because you had this constellation within the cover, a solar eclipse, and that this story, this timeline also occurred during the 4th of July weekend. And I just wanted to add that little tidbit because it acts as a great credifier to the American Super Shemitah and the relationship between America and the constellation of Gemini. Now let's cover the second meaning of the constellation of Gemini, which is the bride of Christ. And I'm not gonna go through all the biblical verses to support this for sake of time. I'm just gonna simply point you to this book called The Gospel in the Stars by Joseph A. Seiss. It's a very thorough book and he gives many biblical examples uh, pertaining to each constellation and where they can be found at in the scriptures. I definitely suggest uh, that you check that book out if you're interested again in topics like these but nonetheless because if we lay out the 12 constellations in order chronologically of jesus redemptive plan gemini is the 10th constellation within the set leaving only cancer as the 11th and leo the lion as the last and he explains in his book that gemini represents the bride of christ Cancer represents the rapture, the snatching away, and then Leo represents the second advent of Christ. And since we know that America is correlated to the constellation of Gemini and that Israel is back in the land, you could make a case that America rise and fall is connected to the soon rapture. In fact, even the super Shemitah is indicating this because a super Shemitah is also tied to the Jubilee year, which is associated with rest and restoration. And so moreover, brothers and sisters, the constellation of Gemini is symbolizing war and the soon rapture of the bride of Christ. In fact, I would even articulate that they are synonymous with each other, that when war happens to America, the rapture will happen with the bride of Christ, which I think is absolutely fascinating when you consider the timing of all these world events happening right now, saints, we are almost out of here. Praise God for that. But coming back to our America Super Shemitah pattern, war is synonymous with America as its rise and fall. Contained within the Shemitah pattern, the number 11 and solar events in the constellation of Gemini. And so if we bring this back into context, with Israel, because remember, Israel is God's timepiece for end time events. We see how the fall of America puts us right into the 11th Shemitah. Hence why America is uniquely connected to Israel. Hence why this super Shemitah saints is very significant for both groups, which leads me into our final section, the final hour which is represented by this twin set of solar eclipses that essentially circle this super Shemitah as being very significant and is the set of eclipses that mark an X 
over America. Again, highlighting the fall of America. And so with that said, let's go ahead and dive into our third section, America's Final Hour. The twin total solar eclipses that form an X over America is marking America's final hour. And in conjunction with our Amos Code series, God uses celestial vents as signs or warnings of impending judgment. From Romans 1 verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all impiety and unrighteousness which is what we find in the book of Amos chapter eight, verse nine. And in that day, I will make the sun go down at noon and I will darken the land on a day of light, highlighting the significance of a total solar eclipse, which is described in the book of Revelation as being as black as sackcloth. And so these celestial events are meant to get our attention. Unfortunately, evolutionary science has kind of crept into the church and so a reverence for these types of signs has fallen by the wayside. Although when you understand the statistical improbability for them to happen in the first place, you begin to realize how significant these events are, especially as they form this X pattern over America within a seven year period, interestingly enough. And one of these eclipses also follows our 11 date connection which I continue to hound on by providing example after example, because as God has told me, follow the 11s. And so this crisscross pattern will definitely demonstrate that in some rather fascinating ways. So let's get into this. We have two eclipses, one that occurred on August 21st of 2017, followed up by the other portion of the X on 4-8 of 2024. And chronologically speaking, these encircle this particular Super Shmita year of 5782, the end cover of the American story. Folks, this X pattern is not coincidental. And so with that said, let's take a look at the dates, the date durations, some historical connections to these eclipses, and what that means moving forward for not only America, but Israel as we will intro briefly into the third installment of this Super Shemitah series. So the final hour, similar to our 11 date connection, 821 is one of those. And interestingly enough, 48, when you add that up together, equals 12. And so God using these dates as a metaphor from going from the 11th hour to midnight. Or another way to look at that, 12 minus 11, the final hour. In fact, playing with this idea of 12 and 11, if I place a pair of them right here and another right here, this happens to be the midpoint of this eclipse pattern, which landed on 12, 14 of 2020. And why is that significant saints? Because that date was that of another total solar eclipse on 12, 14 marking the exact middle, 1,211 days on the left and 1,211 days on the right, highlighting a subtle 11 pattern. In addition, another anomaly using this theme of the middle is that the 1214 eclipse also landed on the exact middle of Hanukkah, four days on the left and four days on the right. And reemphasizing our base number connection this would be an example of the number four. And when we consider the 1,211 days, one plus two plus one plus one also equals our base number of four. And more profoundly, that they deal with two halfway points, thereby connecting all three of these eclipses to two separate events, one dealing with America and one dealing with Israel. And a further proof that what happens to America will have direct impact on Israel. Just as God's Shemitah cycle is telling us as we look at it from a 5,000 foot view. The statistical probability for something like this to be random 
folks, you can't coach that. This is, this is God doing this. It's fascinating because he is trying to get our attention. In addition, because this eclipse is the middle of Hanukkah, this is also foreshadowing a connection with Israel and the coming third temple. Because Hanukkah, after all, is a pattern of prophecy when the Antichrist stands in a holy temple. So these three eclipses are very significant. I can't understate that. In addition, another very unique connection, similar to our Super Shemitah duration of 245 years from front to back cover, these eclipses also share that connection because from 821 to 48 is 2,423 days. And if you add up all those numbers, again, it equals to 11. And so it's absolutely fascinating to see how we have a number 11 connection with the first eclipse. We have an 11 connection with the date duration between the eclipses. And we have our connection to the number four between these eclipses. So all three are very significant. And check this out. This is where it gets crazy. But all three of the total solar eclipses land on Mondays, which implies that God wants us to be sensitive to this unique detail. I know this is the first time that I've come across an example like this, and I think it's absolutely amazing. But now let's switch tracks and focus on the very first clips of this twin eclipse pattern. Because one thing that God has led me to in my research, since honing in on the 11 date aspect of it, was to historically take a look at previous eclipses that landed on 821. And this is where it gets rather telling saints because the last two times that we had an eclipse on 821 were connected to world wars. 821 of 1914, 821 of 1933, and of course our 821 of 2017. And what is fascinating is that the one that occurred in 1914 is actually dubbed the World War I eclipse. However, it's the 1933 one that is kind of interesting in that it would be six years from this year of 1933 that World War II would start. And so an inference that we can make from the previous two is that a World War occurred within seven years from these 821 eclipses. And if we take that unit of seven years, that too aligns with this crisscross pattern from 821 of 2017 to 48 of 2024, meaning that there is a World War III coming. I'm not sure when it's gonna take place, but based on these observable patterns that God uses for a reason, we can know from these details that a war is coming in the future, very soon. And if that's all you knew, then as you turn on the news and you see everything going on with the tension between Russia and Ukraine and the US and NATO, or in the Indo-Pacific with China and the US and Taiwan, or even in the Middle East, as tension ratchets it up, continues to escalate between Iran and Israel, of almost daily threats between both sides. These escalating world tensions is matching, saints, this 821 World War connections. And in addition, is consistent with our theme of war and the constellation of Gemini with America. You see how this is all fitting together? Wars and rumors of wars. That's exactly what Jesus told us would happen in the end times. The birth pains, as they increase, and they are increasing, saints. The frequency and intensity is picking up. And what blows my mind is that there are many who don't think that war is coming. They have faith in our military. But oh, how the ties have changed, saints. China and Russia has passed the U.S. up in military technology, specifically speaking to the hypersonic missiles. In fact, China claims they actually now have a hypersonic missile that is heat seeking. And statistically speaking, America has lost 90% of its aircraft from heat seeking missiles. So when you add those two together of hypersonic missiles with heat seeking technology, it's looking very bad for America. 
But I imagine that people gloss over this fact because of pride. Pride is blinding most Americans from recognizing the threat that's at America's doorstep. Even when the military tells us that they are concerned about what they are seeing unfolding. I don't know, it makes me think that sometimes things are not as real to people until it hits them in the face. And unfortunately, I think that's most Americans. But if you're spiritually sensitive, you see exactly what's going on. Now, coming back to one last detail that I want to highlight with these eclipses and our Amos code is that the eclipse on 821, our 11 day connection and the one that's tied to world wars, occurred in the constellation of Leo, which is emblematic of Jesus' judgment. In fact, in Amos, we see God's judgment is characterized as a lion, providing further confirmation that this X pattern of eclipses is representing the fall and demise of America, AKA the final cover of the American Super Shmita story. Now to put this in some perspective with Israel, because again, Israel's key for end time prophecy, there is a concept that we will learn in the third installment called a Shemitah cycle half wave pattern. Because arguably one of the most recent and significant events in modern Israel's history is the regathering of the Jewish people in 1948. And what I found interesting about this was that it actually doesn't land on a Shemitah cycle. And praying on that fact, I believe that is in part due to the fact that since God uses full Shemitah cycles, there has to be another half cycle to complete the first half wave. And so coming back to our overall Shemitah pattern, emphasizing the 11th Shemitah, that would place the next half wave cycle between 2025 and 2026. And if that truly is the case, then our crisscross pattern butts up right next to that half wave cycle. And so moreover, providing a window of time for this war to kick off, which is any time from right now till 2024. And what that provides for us saints is some buffer time because I don't see anywhere in the scriptures where the rapture happens and then immediately the Antichrist is ruling and reigning for seven years, the seven seals open, boom, boom, boom. But that I would suggest there is some time for things to get set up after the rapture. It may be a few months, it may be a year or two, but that this half wave cycle pattern allows for that flexibility. And so moreover, is a war coming for America? Absolutely. Will it happen in the year 2022? It's possible, but it could also be as far out as 2024. Now, if we look at the landscape that with everything going on globally, it doesn't seem like it can make it to 2024. However, God is sovereign and he can do what he wants. In fact, we have had many celestial signs of great significance fall chronologically between these two solar eclipses that are all pointing to not only a significant change for America, but the world at hand. For example, if you recall that Neil Wise comment, I actually have a video on that, where in that video, God highlighted a connection that this comment was referencing a Russian attack. However, we have also seen the great conjunction, Saturn and Jupiter, the longest partial lunar eclipse, that was connected to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Also another sign that I haven't covered on this channel, but is the Revelation 12 sign with the 12 stars above the woman clothed with the sun and the moon at her feet happened about a month after our 821 eclipse. And so moreover, we've actually had a slew of very significant celestial signs all grouped within this very small window. However, one final topic that I want to bring up real quick before we head into the final, final section of this video is that I remember when God was teaching me about this first 821 eclipse was that he didn't want me to think of it as a judgment eclipse, but to think of it as the rapture eclipse 
Although there is definitely judgment associated with it, this is a twofold sign, one for believers and one for unbelievers. And so with that said, let's do a quick recap, highlighting the topics that we have covered in this two-part American Super Shemitah video. In section one, we learned that God uses the seven days of creation as a cipher for understanding prophetic patterns, namely through numerical patterns, such as the Shemitah cycle and the number 11, as well as using celestial signs to further emphasize prophetic events. We then learned in section two, how a combination of all these different prophetic patterns play out in the American Super Shemitah story, outlining the rise of America and the fall of America, predominantly through war, which was outlined through the use of the number 11, Shemitah patterns and celestial signs in the constellation of Gemini, and that this story's climax and resolution were connected to the World Trade Center attack and the debacle of the Afghanistan withdrawal, as America's enemies have used both of these events to their advantage to surpass America militarily. And our third section dealt with America's final hour, where God uses a twin solar eclipse pattern to circle this particular Super Shemitah pattern as being very significant and relevant to America. In addition, God has also been using other celestial events within this X pattern to highlight major change coming for America. And what the whole Amos Code series is all about, God's judgment on America. And so with that said, this is where we're gonna end this portion of the video. The world is coming to an end, and the most important thing for any person is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. The one who died for our sins, was buried, and he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel, and that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth one confesses, resulting in salvation. And this, beloved, is just the beginning of a fascinating and wonderful relationship with the creator of the universe. Being a believer in Christ is a supernatural experience, and one that you can experience every single day. It's mind-blowing. It's a game-changer. Jesus wants to talk to you. He desires to talk to you. He loves us so much. In fact, this love Paul describes as a four-dimensional power that when you experience it, it will surpass all knowledge. That is incredible. And I testify to this experience. It will set your heart on fire for Christ overnight. The sweetness of the power of the Holy Spirit. We serve an amazing God and he loves us so much. And so with that said, saints, this is where we're gonna end this video. I just wanna thank you for watching. I love y'all and I'll see you next time. God bless.